So today I thought we'd take a look at Cloud9 because they are one of, if not the best team in NA right now. And they played a pretty interesting comp on Haven because Haven is normally a haven for the agent Sova. You often will see pretty much every team pick a Sova, but Cloud9 did not do that. Instead, they went with the traditional, you know, what I would call normal Astra Jet Killjoy. But they went with Sky and Breach instead. Now, Sky and Breach are agents that you can play. You can also play KO. But normally, it's Sova plus one of the other initiators rather than, you know, no Sova and two of the others. And what I really loved about Cloud9 is that for the majority of their attacking rounds, they actually played to the strengths of their comp, which sounds very weird. And it's like, well, doesn't every pro team do that? But honestly, you'd be surprised. Sometimes you see pro teams bring out kind of weird comps and then just kind of play in a default mode and even though they might have a comp that is particularly suited to a certain thing they don't necessarily you know do that thing all the time whereas cloud9 for most of their attacking half are going to make the most of this comp because this comp is basically a comp that can just go in and wants to full execute you have double flashes you have a jet obviously you have your smokes and you know that's what they're going to make the most of when you play the breach you're probably going to be pretty execute heavy because you don't have like the information that the other initiators do but you do have the potential to you know initiate from a long range away and kind of you know go i can do this this and this and if it's all well timed and all goes together then it can be pretty successful and we're going to see cloud nine give us some of that and it's going to start here right away on the pistol round because as we see uh, the Cloud9, they're just all grouped up on C, but as you can see, actually, EG have also got a sort of mini stack on the uh, C long here. So let's see how this goes for them. So as you can see, they send in a flash, they send in the stun, uh, but then as we run this forward, they get one kill, they get two kills. And what happened here, of course, was, I mean, five beat three on a pistol round, right? And, and obviously they hit their shots. But the thing is, I think that this jet obviously caused a bit of panic as well by going across here. This jet dashed out, kind of leaving his teammate, you know, to die. And so it, it didn't go great for EG there. You know, they kind of dashed out. Whereas this dash kind of created a bit more chaos. I think that the dash out, you know, kind of just basically sacrificed one of his teammates. And then as we run this forward, the, you know, the execute isn't going to stop. We get the nano swarm here, uh, getting rid of that corner. And look at this. We get the smoke. We get the flash. And then that allows Leaf to literally just run up all the way behind Dre, who, you know, is caught up in all the confusion of everyone getting on site. They end up in a 5v2, they get the spike down, and of course they are going to end up winning this round. And this was basically what Cloud9 were doing. You know, the spike is down and, you know, 20 seconds have uh, passed. That was a lot of what they did in this attacking side because it suited their comp. You know, that's what their comp was really good at. Grouping up together, getting on site, go fast. Here we go. And uh, we're going to see some more examples of that. And let's take a look at an example of that in round number four. It's currently 2-1 to Cloud9. Uh, and as you can see, EG are kind of playing this, you know, retake A mode. They have a bit of Killjoy utility set up on A uh, for that very thing. You can you can pretty much tell because the alarm bot is here. So obviously they aren't going to mess with A uh, because the alarm bot is there. Just checking if anyone wants to push out all the way there. And the reason that they're going to do that is that they have the Killjoy ult on Reformed here. So... Let's see how uh, that goes for EG and how it goes for Cloud9. So Cloud9, as we take a look at the map, you know, they start making their way down A on both sides. They Astra ult, as you can see. And then what we're also going to get is the Breach ult as well. Now, obviously, we know that no one's on site. They didn't know anyone was on site. Uh, and so, you know, it ended up being, you know, what you might call not the most useful of uh, breach ults but in the end they get the spike down either way they have full sight control but then what's going to happen is after the spike goes down we're going to get the defender killjoy but you may notice that this defender killjoy is not in the usual spot and the reason for that of course is that if they did a killjoy ult here the breach will just aftershock it and it will die for free so they have to do it in somewhere where they think might be safe and because of this astral wall and where this astral wall is planted they feel like okay th this breach isn't going to be in this area and we can hold this and the alarm bot hasn't gone off either so that's all fine right so they have to put it in that area but because it's in that area look there's still actually quite a bit of space on site for the cloud nine players to be in you know this isn't like the other killjoy ult that's going to push you back to this corner you know, and that's all you can really be in. There's still plenty of space for them to actually fight. And as we play this forward, you're going to see how that impacts the round. So Killjoy is coming in. Obviously, EG start to make their way back towards site. The Cloud9 players, you know, start to retreat, of course. 
And uh, Reformed here is just going to drop down, you know, right about when he thinks, okay, here we go. And uh, there it is. But he just drops down. But the problem is, you know, unlike the other Killjoy, where they would be trapped in this corner, there's plenty of space here for Leaf to just watch. You know, he can just, he can just watch here. And because of where the spike is planted as well, obviously, the, either side of long, this is a really good plan for. So, you know, they can just watch. And that's the difference this Breach made that, you know, basically they didn't get fought off site. And as you can see here as well, they just decide to fight the site. You know, not go anywhere and just fight. And then they end up winning the round. And if you take a look at where the EG players died, none of them really got close to the spike. You know, they didn't make it past halfway into the site. And uh, that was the kind of the difference that, you know, just having just having a breach made. So, you know, if you feel confident that your opponent is going to pick a Killjoy, you know, breach has an advantage of just like automatically making the Killjoy lockdowns a million times worse and a lot more awkward for your opponent. And now let's take a look at round number seven. It's currently 4-2 to Cloud9. And up to this point, Cloud9 pretty much every round had sent like four or five people to a site, as we just saw, and just, you know, fast took the site and uh, played played from there, right? And uh, to this point, it had gone pretty well for them. But we're going to see a weird round here where they're about to plant a Killjoy ultimate here, uh, Cloud9, and then no one is going to move. And I think the idea, if we take a look at the map positions, I think the idea that they were initially going for is, you know, we'll put the Killjoy ultimate there. It'll, you know, push them back. They'll think we're going C, and then, you know, the jet will come here. You know, maybe these people on A will start to rotate and we'll get free kills on them, things like that. But that did not happen. E.g., the, these players are just going to stay there. Pretty much everyone is going to stay exact. This map is going to look the exact same. And you'll see what I mean uh, as we get to planting this Killjoy ultimate. Uh, so here it goes. There's the Killjoy ultimate. You can see there isn't anyone on C anyway. Again, obviously, Cloud9 don't know that. Uh, but, you, I mean, as we run this forward, I mean, you can just keep looking at the map as the Killjoy ultimate goes. No one is moving. Right, like literally no one no one moves. And uh, eventually they end up like walking onto C as we're about to see. But the spike as well, oh, I'll just quickly go back. Look at where the spike is. And, and the Killjoy Ultimate is over by this point. The spike, no one's got it, right? No one's picked that up. It's still just back there. They're eventually coming onto C site. They don't know that anyone's there. Eventually, I mean, I guess they were hoping that they would win this fight, uh, but they, they don't end up winning that fight. And so now, finally, the Breach has picked up the spike. And initially, I think he came back towards A, and, and then Leaf died, and then they were like, okay, well, like, I guess we have C, but the spike was so far away. And EG must have been pretty confused at what was happening, and they have to, you know, waste a stun and, and make sure that no one's in there either. Unlike, you know, it had taken them so long, and, and, you know, there isn't actually much time left either to plant here. And the Silver Alt is going to come as well, which is also going to delay the plant, right? And so they end up having to like stick the plant whilst whilst he's going down, and 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 it's just it's just not pretty, really. And as you can see, it's a pretty easy retake and ends up in a three v one for EG. Like it was it was weird, and I kind of get what I think I know what they were trying to do. They were, they were hoping I think that those people on A would rotate, right, and that they would find free kills on them, and that you know then they'd just go away. I'm pretty sure that was the idea. Obviously, evil geniuses didn't fall for it. They didn't move. And then as soon as they didn't move, it was like Cloud9 didn't know what to do. And it was kind of, it was just, it was just weird. Because so up to this point, it was going well for them, just going fast on a site. And you would think that a Killjoy ult as well, you know, e EG don't have that breach to destroy it. You would think that, you know, maybe they would just Killjoy ult themselves and just, you know, use that as another way of just taking over a site. Instead, you know, they tried to run a, a, a kind of a weird fake here, and uh, obviously it didn't work. But eventually, Cloud9 got back to what they're good at, and just went back to the good old clean execute as we see here. So you get a breach stun on long, uh, you get the jet smoke there to cross to short, and uh, they take control of long, and, and, you know, they start to push up, they dog to just get that extra more space. And this is what they were basically doing, right? You So you've used, you've used a breach stun down here, you've used the dog down here, you used the jet smoke here. It was just like... They were using a bit of utility to, you know, just get that initial space just to, like, get up to this area. Uh, and then from there, it becomes their full execute plan that we are about to see soon. And it's a really nice execute for them as well. So here we go. As you can see, we know that they're all pretty stacked up. Hey, there's only two people here. And uh, they're going to start to make that move up. You get the aftershock in here. Then you're going to get the smokes. Here we go. 
they uh, get the jet dash in there. You're going to get a flash. You're going to peek around this corner. And then uh, we're going to get the trades. We're going to get the kills. And we're going to end up, you know, feeling pretty good about where we are. We get the spike down. We're in a 4v2. And this was just something that Cloud9 did pretty well time and time and time again, right? And with the breach and the sky, it was just, you know, using that utility to get slightly ahead more and more and more. And then eventually it was just a, a nice win. And as you can see there, the breach stunning again, the nano swarms coming out as well. It's, it's just like hell for EG at this point, you know, who it's like, what do you do? You know, and eventually they are going to end up uh, falling here. Reformed, I think, dies to, yeah, the classic from Zephyr. And then the alternate angle of this also looks really cool. So here is the replay. So we get the aftershock here, as you can see. Then we're going to get a flash in over here. You get the jet dash coming down there. And uh, at this point, right, like the jet dash and the flash here has, uh, you know, opened up all of this space for the breach. And uh, so he's just going to, you know, come and swing with Leaf, right? He's going to say, right, I'm on site with you. Leaf, you can come and swing now and we can swing as a pair and uh, get those kills. And then if we just watch this forward and watch who's shooting who, right? That flash from the sky from EG is a bit late. Leaf gets the first kill. You can see here that the sky starts shooting towards here. But look at that. You know, now the sky from here comes peeking through. And this is why, you know, taking control of like both areas, by taking control of both short and long, they were able to, you know, make sure that they've got someone peeking around here and peeking around here. And now you can see that the Astra is ready to come and support the breach as well. And so it just means that, you know, these, it's just well run, right? It's just, it's just well run. And as you can see, they end up getting those kills and they end up getting the site. So now let's take a look at round number 16. And so we're on to Cloud9's defensive half this time. And Cloud9 on the defensive half, I don't think did anything too special. I don't think they necessarily needed to do anything too special, to be honest. They did hit some some nice shots. Uh, but basically what's going to happen is, as you can see, EG, you know, are kind of pressuring different parts of the map. We've got the Sova drone here that's going to come down long. Uh, I'm pretty sure either they just had or are about to send a Sky Dog in there. And actually what's going to happen is Cloud9 are going to buy that, you know, it actually is more of a C here. And so you're going to get the Sky in the Breach starting to lean over towards that way but it's actually going to be an a hit but let's see how the difference from what i talked about last time and getting control of both lanes of attack uh that's going to come back to bite uh eg here against cloud9 and you'll see what i mean so here goes the silver drone as you can see it's coming down long it does end up spotting leaf who's just like come at me uh and he gets his knife out there and he's just gonna jiggle peek that right so as you can see here as well uh, we're going to get a sky flash into garage and you get the sky dog from uh, from cloud nine coming down mid. Now that's sky dog. If we just watch it on the map, I'm pretty sure is going to see this guy, maybe also the jet. And that I think is going to, you know, make them think, oh, it probably is a C then, right? The sky is there. But as you can see, actually, EG start to lean back towards A. So whilst that's going on, you get Leaf here. He's just going to, you know, be jiggling back and forth. And, uh, you know, he's not trying to take a gunfight. He's just spotting to see if someone is there or if they're coming here. And then he hears, you know, thunder footsteps coming down as well. You get the silver dot coming on him as well. But as you can see, if we go to the map, there is no one that goes up short. And the reason that they can't really afford to do that is, yeah, they know Leaf's here and he was on long. They have no idea if, you know, anyone is in any one of these corners or where they could be on short. I mean, they could even be here, right? And they have no idea because they haven't really checked it and they don't have the utility to check it. They've used their sky dog. They just used the flash as well. You know, they just use their silver dart here and they just use the drone as we saw. So there is really not much to check in. So they decide let's just go as a big group and we'll go down there. But you're going to see how Leaf is able to punish that as we run this forward. So there isn't much time left. The Seekers all go towards long as well. Uh, here they are. They all go towards long, which kind of helps Leaf confirm like maybe there's no one close up on him on short. You get the Breach ult as well. And this is just something that they were pretty comfortable in doing and playing a retake because you have the Breach. And as you can see, that nets them one kill. Uh, Leaf smokes off his short and is just happy to, you know, go in, get those kills for free. And then eventually, you know, you get the aftershock and Zeta gets a final kill as well. And so that was kind of like a good showing of, you know, why pressuring like both sides or, or having control of both sides can be quite helpful. Uh, and that's what, you know, that's what Cloud9 were pretty good at in this game. You know, they were using their utility to slowly work up into different areas of the map, as we saw. And then they were good at executing as well. And on the defensive side, you know, they felt a bit more comfortable, I think, in playing a, a kind of retake strategy or, you know, not a super aggressive strategy in general because they did have that breach with the utility to get them back onto the site and play as a group as well.